Good morning, world. How are you? It is Tuesday morning. A beautiful, rainy morning. I know people say they hate the rain. Maybe you're going to say you hate me after I say this, but I love the rain. It's just, just, what's bad about it? You get wet? What are you going to freaking melt? Everybody everybody who dislikes the rain, I'm not going to call you out and yell at you and say you shouldn't listen or we're not going to be friends. I just, I want you to explain yourself. So I'm going to talk about sports because of course this is the Dave Talks Sports Podcast, episode number 24 on a Tuesday morning, 6.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, July the 23rd. But I want to know why you hate the rain. Yeah, it's a peculiar open. It's a peculiar to- peculiar topic. But I just don't get it. What are you, so you're going to get wet. All right, you got a big interview. You got a big meeting. You don't want your clothes to get ruined. Fine. Yeah, you wanted to play golf or you, you had a golf, your tea time, outdoor tennis match, basketball game, whatever. You want to go to the sporting event outside and it's going to rain. Okay, that's now a pain in the ass for you. I guess I get it. But what's, what's the problem? It's good for the environment. Washes away all the crap. It's relaxing. I just... Working... So I work at CBS Sports Radio Network now. And that's where I'm on my way home from. You guys join me on the commute. You join me on the rainy commute this morning. No sun glare to deal with today. So you guys can enjoy that, those who can't stand that, myself being one of those people. Before I, I became a full-time employee at CBS Sports Radio Network, I worked for approximately nine years full-time at a gym, full-scale health club facility, and uh, I still work there part-time. But all I listen to all day was everybody come in and bitch and moan and complain about the weather. And I get that you can't make everyone happy. It's a customer service job. And I guess if you put five, six, seven hundred different people under the same roof on any given day, now we had approximately 2,500 members, but on a given day you're seeing between four, five, six, you know, hundred people. I get you can't make everybody happy, but it was an overwhelming majority of people, no matter what the weather was. It could be 90, it could be 10, it could be raining, snow, you know, snowing, blizzard, thunderstorms, foggy. Yeah, it doesn't didn't matter. The overwhelming majority of people would just complain. Ah, the same person who says, it's too damn hot. I just can't wait for winter. And then when it snows, say, I hate this crap. When is it going to be summer? Just, just, just everybody relax. Everybody take it down a notch. Austin Powers said, Scotty, take it down a notch. Or Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. Just take it down a notch. Everybody just enjoy the day. All right, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go on a diatribe about life. And say, you know, you should just be happy and be grateful. And you should be. But I'm not going to spend the podcast doing that today. But just who cares that it's raining? People call this this weather miserable. Yet it was miserable a couple days ago when it was 99 degrees out. I mean, welcome. If you live where I live, welcome to New York. You get every imaginable kind of weather there is. From zero to 100, to rain, snow, fog, and anything in between. So just deal with it. On that, to- on that note, on that lecture note, let's talk about some freaking sports, huh? So we're going to spend most of the time today talking about Major League Baseball and the netting at stadiums. Before I get to that, I just want to touch on a couple other news and notes. 
The Wizards have figured out their general manager situation and their front office situation, so now they're set to allegedly be set to offer Bradley Beal a a three-year, $111 million extension. Got to be honest, I'm mentioning it because it's kind of one of the bigger stories right now, but I don't really care. The Wizards suck. John Wall is out for most of this coming season. Excuse me if I just hit the mic. Uh, So the Wizards are going to be absolutely terrible. And here comes the fun part of the drive where somebody is in my way for no reason. Let's give him a little honk. Thanks, pal. Got out of my way right quick. We can get ourselves home safely. By the way, if you don't know and didn't know that every day, I've been up for quite some time. I work overnight. I woke up uh, somewhere in the 4 p.m. range yesterday. Uh, Some days you see me, I'm heading off to my other job, one of my other jobs. Uh, Yes, I have four jobs. If you were wondering, I work at ESPN+, Plus, CBS Sports Radio Network, and two different gyms. Um, All told, and again, I'm not special. I'm not saying this because I'm special. Let's honk at our second person today. Yeah get everybody moving this morning yeah it's the pedal on the right the one on the left stops the car the one on the right goes there you go you got it um i have four jobs i all told work about 70 hours a week and apparently this is the get to know dave ettinger the host of the dave talk sports podcast 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 and it's just a little bit more about me so you know, I do what I gotta do. I uh, I like all of my jobs. Uh, I like working. I have a very solid work ethic. Uh, something that I got from uh, my parents. Uh, both of my parents. I can barely recall either of them taking a sick day as I was growing up. Um, you know, obviously people you know, people get sick and things happen, but it's not just something that became a habit. Um, you know, still to this this day, they're both in their 60s. They still enjoy going to work on a daily basis. And I really got that from them, my older brother as well. And absolutely, my wife is just one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. Uh, so it's all kind of been ingrained in me to just work hard every day and work towards the things that you really want. Uh, It's just something I believe in and, uh, you know, in in becoming a full-time employee at CBS Sports Radio Network, that's kind of one of the things that I've always employed. And I think if you found my employers at an honest moment, they would probably tell you the same thing. You know, this is not to boast or brag or tell you that I'm special. Uh, I just am here to tell you that every day I work my ass off. And that's just kind of who I am. So... Now you know a little bit more about me. Um, as I told you from the pilot episode, uh, which is 24 episodes already ago, I don't do edits on this. I just get in the car. Literally the second I pull away from the curb from where I park about two and a half blocks from CBS Sports Radio Network, I just start recording, I start talking, and we go. Uh, it takes me about 40 minutes to get home. Uh, once I get home, this this is very difficult to do. I either go straight to sleep, spend some time with my wife and kids, or you know, definitely go right to sleep because I have to get off to another job. Like today, I'll be at work in about three and a half hours. Uh, also, I hope you can hear me above the rain today. Uh, you know, as we already mentioned, <laughs> the weather. Um, but yeah, I don't do edits. Uh, I, I talk for about 20 minutes. Uh, and then I re-listen to it back to make sure everything's okay, but I do not edit it at all. Um, so then the second I get home, plug it right into the computer, upload it to YouTube, and then it's all yours. Um, so that's really that's really it. Uh, whatever's going on in sports or in life or on the drive home, the craziness that may happen, uh, you know, the near running people over, is kind of what you'll get with this podcast. So... Uh, but it's usually 90 to 95 percent about sports. So let's get to it. The thing I really wanted to talk about today is the netting at Major League Baseball stadiums. I just 
I don't know how anyone could be on the opposite side of, of the discussion for me and from what I would think would be most people who are adults. Again, you don't have to have kids to feel this way, I don't think. But when you see a three-year-old, it could be a toddler, it could be an infant, it could be any child, it could be anyone, it could be an elderly person, or it could be a physically fit, athletic, former college athlete, former professional athlete, I don't care who you are. If you're not paying attention or not physically able to catch a foul ball going 90 miles an hour with your bare hands and you're not Superman or Superwoman or any of these superheroes, then there should be nothing wrong with having netting at Major League Baseball stadiums across the board the same way they do it in hockey arenas. You got the glass and then you got netting as well that extends. A oh, little traffic today. That's always fun. Uh, we almost got rear-ended. I don't know if you can catch that one in the podcast. That was fun. But, uh, yeah, a little, little traffic. So maybe you'll get more than 20 minutes of me today. We'll see. I just, I physically don't understand anyone who can argue against putting up netting from foul pole to foul pole in Major League Baseball stadiums. Again, you don't have to have kids. I have kids. I have four children. I have a 19, 14, 12-year-old and an 11-month-old. And this is not just about the 11-month-old. It's not just about the three-year-old. It's about everybody. And again, I played a lot of sports growing up. I played baseball and basketball all through college. I mean, through, excuse me, through high school. Uh, I could have potentially played in college. That's a, another story for another day. You know, I'm a pretty good athlete, but I, it's not to say that I'm going to catch a foul ball going 90 miles an hour with my bare hand. And even if I have a glove, I may not be paying enough attention. And if I want to glance down at my phone for a second, which most people are looking at a lot of the time, I don't want to have to worry that one of my kids could get hit with a foul ball. Now, while the odds are pretty slim and pretty low that you're going to be the one person out of the thousands and thousands of people in the stadium, it can happen, and it has happened. Somebody died at a Major League Baseball game, and it's still not mandated throughout all of the stadiums that they should have netting from foul pole to foul pole. I just don't know how you can see it any other way. When you see Francisco Lindor, I believe it was on Sunday, hit a three-year-old with a foul ball. I, I, mean, I mean, just what else has to happen for it to be unanimous and be required that this netting goes from foul pole to foul pole? I mean, that little girl... The Houston uh, Astro Chicago Cubs game where, where uh, Albert Almora Jr. hit a foul ball, just an absolute screamer, hits this three-year-old girl with the little pigtails and the ribbons in her hair, hits her in the head, and now we're finding out she's got bleeding on her brain and, and skull fractures. I, I just, I don't understand. And I, I, I listened to... As part of my job and working in the control room at CBS Sports Radio Network, I, listen, I have to listen to callers. I have to listen to responses that come in on Twitter and Facebook and social media. And I have to listen to the hosts that I work for. And it wasn't the entire show, but I had to listen to a decent portion of the show where this was also a discussion. I'm not trying to put anybody down and I'm not trying to degrade anybody. But I just, at, po at certain points in the show, in a private moment, and I work with another person in the control room, I expressed myself privately. Not on the air. I'm not on the air. I, I just talk to you guys. I just help push the buttons and do all the things that get the commercials played and get us on the air and make sure the mics and the volumes and everything, all the audio sounds right 
for everything that goes on the air. What you hear on the radio, I, you know, I, I'm responsible for making sure that sounds right and goes right. But I'm not there to give my opinion. I do, I do that here. But I had to listen to a good portion of the show of people actually telling me that it's going to detract from people and lower the interest of people and fans to physically go to the game. Like, people would actually not go to a game because there could be netting from foul pole to foul pole, and it's no longer going to be as aesthetically pleasing to the eye. First of all, if you've ever been fortunate enough to sit behind a home plate in all the areas where there is already netting, it's not a distraction. It's not annoying. It takes like 0.8 seconds for your eyeballs to adjust. We're human beings. We can adjust to this different environment. But really, if it's potentially saving a life or major injury to somebody, who cares? Who cares? I would let uh, more of a distraction, more of an obstruction be in my way if I knew that nobody was going to get hurt. It's just, it's just mind-boggling to me that anyone... That, I mean, anyone could be on the other side. I just don't get it. If you're on the other side, I want to hear from you. If you're on my side, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from everybody. You can, you can find me on Twitter, at Dave Ettinger2. You can post any comment you want in the YouTube comment section below this video. Please subscribe to the video while you're here, somewhere down here. And you can also follow me and find me on my website as well as my Facebook page, both named Dave Talk Sports. Dealing with a little traffic on the way home today. You may uh, get an extra couple minutes with me today. So hopefully you are enjoying and hopefully you're still listening to this point in the video. But I got to listen to people say that we're a bunch of babies now in 2019 that it's the sissification of America and the world. like, And I think those things exist. I think that there's very little discipline for children nowadays. And I'm not, I'm not by any way means saying hit your kids. I don't believe in that. Again, I have four kids. I've never laid a hand on one of my kids and I never will. You can, you can use consequences and discipline and make your kids understand and talk to them. That I believe in. But it's the other side, it's the, it's the people and the parents and the environment and the teachers who enable children and enable people, it's not just children, enable people to do something wrong, not discipline them, and then teach that person that they can continue to do this bad behavior and it's a never-ending cycle. They're never going to learn. They're never going to do better. They're never going to do the right thing. And, and I think that people are too afraid to discipline their children or whoever it may be. And that can contribute to, as people call the sissification of America, if that's what you want to call it. I don't, I don't even talk that way. But, but that's what I was listening to for the last couple hours. Like, that's a real thing, but that's not what this is. Netting in, in Major League Baseball stadiums is nothing. Like I, I want to rip the little hair that I have out of my head. It has nothing to do with that. Us being babies, being babied all the time. Everyone gets a trophy. It's, this is two different conversations. We're st strictly talking about safety. Safety as a spectator because guess what? The players are bigger and faster and stronger and they have... Ways to measure the exit velocity. Now, I laugh at exit velocity and launch angles and all this crap and the saber metrics within the game, but it means something when you're talking about how fast that baseball is traveling into the stands to potentially hit a kid or an elderly, elderly person or someone just not paying attention. Because guess what? Well, maybe I shouldn't be on my phone for 90% of the time that I'm at the stadium. That's my prerogative. And that's the way that a lot of people act. A lot of people, even if they're at a sporting event, even if they're in the middle of class, even if they're in the middle of driving, whatever it is they may be doing, you may not agree with it, it may not be right, but people are going to spend that much time on their phones. It's just what it is. 
So, us being babies in 2019 and, and, and ruining the view, making the game and the grass... I heard about the grass clippings not being aesthetically pleasing. Give me a break. The netting's not in your way. And, and this, this conversation came up. I should really tell you why this conversation came up again. is because the Chicago White Sox became team number seven to put netting from foul pole to foul pole. Now, again, it's not mandated across all of Major League Baseball, but it should be. I'm actually ashamed that the Yankees, the team that I root for, who usually doesn't wait for Major League Baseball to tell them what to do, I'm a little ashamed, actually, that they haven't done this yet. Actually, it bothers me quite a bit. But it bothers me for everybody, not just my team. I, I don't know why it's not happening. Eventually it will happen. I know that. But that's not enough for me. It should have happened yesterday. So everybody out there, please tell me if you feel another way because I don't get you. Sorry. But you have, have the right to your opinion. That's the beauty of this. I'd love to hear your opinion on Twitter at Dave Ettinger 2 right here on my YouTube channel, Dave Talk Sports. Please subscribe and leave your comments below. I am your host, Dave Ettinger. This has been the Dave Talks po- Duh. the Dave Talks Sports Podcast, episode number 24. Again, no edits. <laughs> and I want you to enjoy your rainy, beautiful Tuesday. It's now 6.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 23rd. And until tomorrow, go help put up the nets at Major League Baseball stadiums. See you.